Arguably, no one did 90s minimalism like this style icon, Carolyn Bissett Kennedy. tragically died in the plane accident in 1999. Was her style revolutionary at the time? How did she become such a style icon? How does one cultivate confidence like she did? She's never been too much and we can't get enough of someone who cultivates mystery. She has the charm of discretion. An expression I learned recently that I think could define her pretty well is sexy indifference. We were excited to discover that you are just about to launch the book. So therefore, we got in touch so that you can give us some answers, maybe the ones that we, we didn't have. What it is about her and what she does, you know, that's so simple, but yet has so much impact in our fashion world today when you're looking at minimalism and quiet luxury and stealth wealth, yeah. Whether it's brand advertising campaigns like that of Rouge or Sporty and Rich, runway and designer mood boards, as well as our Instagram and TikTok feeds, one thing is clear. This is now a global conversation with pop culture reference fueled by change we're all awaiting. There has been an influx of designers who are perhaps over promoting their work with there's lots of labels on their designs and there's a lot of kind of celebrity showing us as well and I think it's a time for a change and I think quite luxury is that you you can't really decipher where someone had bought something when you're wearing a look like this you do not need a massive wardrobe to create impact and above all, cultivate confidence in yourself. The perfect capsule wardrobe. She didn't actually have an extensive wardrobe. Um, I spoke to a few close friends, you know, who actually said she, she had about 30 to 40 pieces in the wardrobe and they were, you know, pretty much the same sort of thing, like pops. And you can see that in the looks that she wore, that she had certain basics that she would know fitted well and she would use it as a foundation for her look. It was her. She had it. She was so elegant in her simplicity. And she didn't have a stylist. She was kind of dressing like this pretty much even before she met John F. Kennedy. And I'm not saying she wore Yoji Yamamoto when, it, before she met John F. Kennedy, of course that changed. Um, but, you know, that was required of her because she was marrying into such a, a dynasty, right? And that too, her mother-in-law is Jackie Kennedy. She had a lot of very tasteful fashion friends and, and she was also in that world. And I think when you live in, breathe in that world, you just kind of soak up good taste all the time because these are the people who are creating runways and these are the people who are creating the amazing advertising images that you're seeing on billboards. What is your favorite autumn winter item? I think a simple black coat, just wool, black coat, good cut, not too long on the sleeves and not too big on the shoulders, kind of straight. There is this very bright light in autumn, so I think an accessory like a good pair of sunglasses that will put a little accent on your style. I like that. Our first category in Matilda's fashion journey, coats. Your cold weather frontline, the investment piece should be as practical and warm as it is stylish, a fashion staple that's graced the closets of countless influential women. Prada was Caroline's go-to for all of her coats. An unsurprising choice as Prada epitomizes minimalist elegance, quality materials and impeccable feet. Qualities cherished by Caroline in the whole of her wardrobe.
we have added a French touch to this look with a pair of flare jeans while accessorizing with the signature hairband for a timeless city uniform, which, as you can see, transcends trends and remains relevant and stylish year after year. She made everything look easy and attainable. Looking back at her style and way of being, there's something extremely authentic and unpretentious. It's not a style that calls attention. Fashion was different back then. She seemed to have put a lot of confidence in the brands and designers she wore. She trusted them. There was no strategy or overthinking. There was a practical need for a working woman like us to dress well in the world of fashion and rely on her intuition. Of course, there, are, there were and still are some unspoken rules like the one mentioned by Sunita in her book, talking about the essence of less is more. But there were some who were saying that it was not revolutionary at all. Like, what's your point of view? I think when people are saying that she wasn't, in the 90s, minimalism was very much happening then. Perhaps that is what they mean when they're talking that it wasn't that revolutionary. Calvin Klein, Prada, Jill Sander, they all had that same aesthetic. But I think what Carolyn did that was so interesting was that she championed designers who you wouldn't necessarily associate with minimalism. So Yoji Yamamoto and Andy Mulumista, you know, they were designers who were very conceptual in their approach. And what she did was she would break down certain looks that she would see on their runway. And then she would give it the same quality as a typical minimal piece. And I think that was pretty revolutionary. I think it was just a very clever and intellectual way. Let's talk about another wardrobe essential, and that would be a white shirt. Carolyn Bessette Kennedy often wore the shirt to tone down her beauty, according to the people close to her. Men would wear the shirt to signify professionalism at work. Women in France wear the shirt as a fashion statement to describe their masculine feminine wardrobe. We are probably not the only ones. There's a picture I saw of her recently with her little black tank top with jeans and city heels. She's walking her dog, just casual. She's sexy and confident somehow. Black was definitely Carolyn's go-to color, followed by various shades of beige. This natural color is often associated with heritage and luxury. Carolyn's signature looks would combine shades of beige with contrasting black rather than a monochrome beige look. We have chosen to contrast a classic leather blazer with camel trousers paired with shoes suitable for everyday walking, resembling one of Carolyn's casual looks while out walking her dog. The classic cuts and neutral color palette make it an effortlessly accessible and wearable outfit, completely relevant to today's fashion. The luxurious touch of a well-crafted leather blazer and the use of a heritage color, like beige, make this outfit anything but basic, all in such an understated Carolyn Bassett Kennedy's way. How does it feel to be a woman in the 21st century? We get to vote, we get to make decisions, we get access to loads of clothes and makeup, not to mention filters and feelers. Discussing Carolyn and looking closer into her world feels like stripping down all of the access. 
we have accumulated. This conversation coincides with Makeup Free Pamela at the September Paris Fashion Week and many others, making it so much more relevant to now. I didn't come to Paris Fashion Week and think, oh, I'm not going to wear any makeup. I just thought, I don't know, something just kind of came over me and I was dressing in these beautiful clothes and I thought, I don't want to compete with the clothes. I'm not trying to be the prettiest girl in the room. I feel like... Uh, where we're looking at her jewelry, she didn't wear that much. Hair and makeup is also an interesting part. She was very aware of her and one that she always kind of, same with her style, that she always had the same, but she just changed it a little when she married John Kennedy Jr. So I thought it was a defining women enjoy, you know.